Thank you for coming back to uh, lecture 12 of the short course. At this point, I feel like we should issue certificates upon completion because um, apparently that, that's always a draw. Um, anyway, so if anyone had told me that this summer in the midst of a pandemic and protests over anti-Black police violence and of course Trump, um, that I'd be giving a talk on Elon Musk, I would really not have believed it, but there's very little about what's been going on these past few months that I would have believed. Um, but this is also because Elon Musk has really only been on the edges of my awareness all of these years. I mean, I, when I, I knew about the Hyperloop, about the whole mission to Mars, about Tesla, about naming your babies like they're an accessory to show how cool you are, and about him having a name that makes him sound kind of like a Batman villain. But that was really about it, and I never really um, cared to follow the news about him. Um, and somehow in 2018, I missed the whole... Um, Russian Elon Musk meme phenomenon. So I want to um, thank Nina Buis for um, bringing it to my attention. Um, and I also want to acknowledge uh, a really excellent piece written by Yekaterina olsen Shipyatsky and Fiona Bell um, that I hope will be coming out maybe in all the rushes or something. I don't know this, where they ended up sending it, but um, it's really wonderful and I hope you all have a chance to read it. Um, thank you, uh, at least Fiona's here. Thank you for sharing with me a few days ago. Um, in addition to memes, it also brings up a video of people singing a song to get Elon Musk to come and invest in Russia, but that's theirs to play with and not mine. So um, you can look up the video or read about it when they, when they publish their work. So um, why then are we talking, why are we talking about Elon Musk now and why was the Russian internet talking about Elon Musk in 2018? Um, there's something about Elon Musk that I think is um, very uh, conducive to certain uses and abuses on the internet. He has an expressive face. He doesn't look like he could beat Mark Zuckerberg in a staring contest. Uh, he's a good talker with a sense of humor, generally a kind of larger than life personality, and he's ubiquitous. And there are lots and lots of English language um, Elon Musk memes, which you can feel free to look up um, on your own. And you'll see that a lot of the templates used in the Russian memes um, are the same templates that are used in the English memes. This happens a lot. Um, he's also very aware of memes. He even co-hosted a PewDiePie show evaluating memes with Rick and Morty co-creator Justin Roiland. Oh, and actually let me share the screen now. Hold on one second. Okay. Wait, here we go. Yes, so um, here he is. Um, here he is uh, on the PewDiePie show with Justin Roiland, co-creator of um, of Rick and Morty. In fact, this is only only one of his um, encounters with Rick and Morty fame. He also voiced a, a parody version of himself called Elon Tusk um, on Rick and Morty. And um, to sort of round out the sense of his, um, his internet cred, uh, in 2018, he went on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. For those who aren't familiar with it, it's the most popular podcast um, in the country, if not the world. And it's um, a forum that has a huge following among, um, well, let's say young men. And um, he quite famously on the Joe Rogan podcast, smoked weed. Um, and this image, in fact, is um, one of the big um, images used for, uh, for Elon Musk memes. Um, but we're talking about Russia. So let's look at the Russian memes, the categories they fall into, and then I'll try to figure out what it all means. Um, so let's start with this image that I have here of Musk um, smoking. This is um, big for memes in English um, and works very well for memes in Russian. So there's um, this one here, which says um, Elon Musk shows a new way of getting to Mars, which is, of course, you know, he's getting high. Um, let's come up with a flying table. Um, so he's stone, just sort of spitballing ideas. And why can't we launch Earth into space? Um, so basically stoner humor, humor with, um, with Elon Musk. Um, and making fun of his enthusiasm about space, which is going to be a big part of all of this. But the next two um, feature something uh, that's prominent in uh, most, in a lot of um, Russian Elon Musk memes, and that's kind of unflattering comparisons between Elon Musk and Russia. So this is, a tw I believe, a tweet, or maybe Instagram says, my father, um, my father chews sunflower seeds um, while he is vacuuming, and he spits out the shells uh, right in front of the vacuum cleaner, not leaving any sort of trash. Um, I could never, um, I have so much to learn from this man with an image of Elon Musk, like comparing um, the genius of Elon Musk to the strange father who spits the seeds. Uh, and oh, now we're back to uh, 
being stuck again, excuse me. I have to stop the sharing because it's just decided to stop working. And I have no control over it. And I can't find my cursor. <sighs> oh, you told oh me there we go. Oh, there you go. Got it. Okay. Um, Elon Musk successfully launched 60, uh, 60 Starlink satellites, um, which have allowed the people of Earth to use the global internet. So we're waiting for Roskomnadzor, the uh, Russian media censorship body, to decide whether or not we are uh, residents of Earth. Um, so this refers to Roskomnadzor's uh, tendency to try to enforce separation of Russia from anything that's um, too liberal, too, um, too edgy, too critical, um, and um, projecting onto Musk and his, his satellites. Um, but the big uh, set of memes about Elon Musk in Russia, of course, are the memes that suggested uh, the title for today's talk, uh, which is a set of memes which are usually headlined, what do you think of this Elon Musk? Um, so this was a hashtag campaign, a series of life hacks, ridiculous inventions, um, with a bunch of themes running through them all. Uh, there are a number of them involving life hacks with toilets. So here is, I guess, a, um, a glow-in-the-dark toilet or a toilet with a candle in it. Um, here is a, uh, obviously, a basketball hoop toilet. And here, um, probably the most famous one and the one that I used to advertise this um, talk. Um, so Shuvalov, um responded to the launch of the SpaceX X, um, uh, rocket with the words, the Russian, the Russian people are more talented. Um, so what do you think of this, Elon Musk? So the whole setup here is um, Russian pride. We're more talented than you are. Um, sure, you've got your rockets. Look what we can do. And so here's another toilet thing, um, looking absolutely ridiculous, and also bringing in the theme of alcohol. So a lot of these life hacks have to do with uh, alcohol and drinking. Um, what do you think of this? Elon Musk using a bottle of, I think, is it Jim Bean? I can't really tell, um, to support the chair. Um, what do you think of this Elon Musk? A whole a stack of um, bottles to make a table. Um, and then a whole bunch that are just kind of random life hacks, um, some of which I can't even quite explain. Um, here, and here it says the, um, the door to the um, dining room of our apartment was um, is being held up this way. What do you think of that? Using a bag to keep the door open. Um, here is a doorbell, um, a sort of mechanical uh, Rube Goldberg doorbell contraption uh, and a plow. But a lot of them, and this makes sense as Elon Musk, have to do with cars and transportation. Oh, so I'm sorry, I forgot this one. Um, here is a ladle of sorts. Um, so there are a couple of them that have to do with uh, windshield wipers. So here we have a broom, um, particularly Russian broom instead of a windshield wiper. Uh, and here we have um, a glove instead of a windshield wiper. Here we have a kid using a coffin lid as a slide. Um, and this one, uh, I don't have the actual caption on but the caption said, uh, our roads are full of potholes, so we filled them up with, uh, with grass. What do you think of that, Elon Musk? And the road thing, I think, is actually quite indicative because there's a tradition, there's a, it's a, not an internet meme, but a real meme meme that I've noticed um, in some Russian popular culture going back to the 90s, this notion of taking a weird sort of pride in how bad Russia's roads are. Russia's roads are really terrible and we can drive on them anyway and our cars can survive on them and I bet your cars couldn't survive on them. So, um, so take that, we, um, we do really well on our terrible roads. And that kind of um, perverse pride is what I think is, um, behind so much of it, and we're going to return to it. Uh, all right, so, oh, a lot of them have to do with cars, of course. So when one of the things that Musk is famous for is sending his Tesla's car, Tesla car out into space, there's a Tesla car or, or orbiting out there. So this one is called our, our Answer to Elon Musk, showing a little yellow wagon going to space with a little girl who, um, in a headscarf looking kind of like the Ayonka chocolate, which is a very memeable thing. Um, there are so many memes. Here's one with, with his head on a rocket saying, um, when, you, when one post is not enough for all the jokes about Elon Musk. Um, and what's interesting about Musk here and all of this is that Musk is in on the joke. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot before we get to the joke. There's a, a set of, there's a famous picture of Musk partying with um, Mexican musicians. Um, so this one says the workers at the restaurant when they find out that it's your, your birthday. Um, Disney princess starting to sing all the animals of the woods. Um, 
at graduation when they start to sing um, Grey Night, this cheesy song, the children are embarrassed and then the par parents are dancing. Um, here's Elon Musk wondering whether or not uh, a Tesla can, can ride on Mars. Here's Elon Musk again with a car, when a five, when, me at five dreaming of a car. Um, the, the car that I, drew, that I drew becomes a reality. Here I am now running over the Joker in my new car. Um, and all right, enough joking dudes, where's my car? But Elon Musk is in on the joke. So um, here he is tweeting, many Twitter users tag me in tweets like, um, Elon Musk. I guess it's Russian, what do they all want from me? Um, and it says something, something suspicious about this. Um, and here is a video of a guy in a car driving uh, the car backwards. Um, and Elon Musk responds to it in Russian, ha ha figyelme, um, ha ha awesome. So that is part of Musk's charm, if he has a charm, that he actually um, uh, responds to it and he's on, in on it. So uh, enough screen share. Let's talk about what this all is about. Okay. So what's going on here? Um, so Elon Musk, on the one hand, um, for, for a plutocrat inventor, he has a humor and a kind of chill um, disposition. Um, but he's a strange phenomenon. And there's something about him that I think resonates pretty well um, in the Russian context, in that the kind of big scale thinking that Elon Musk is famous for, these huge transportation projects, these uh, whole new cars, uh, taking over a space program, is he's kind of like what golden age science fiction used to be. In fact, in some strange way, he's kind of like uh, a mad scientist from a 1920s Soviet science fiction story. If you combine a mad scientist say from a platoon of science fiction story like the Ether Tract and all that, with the Monopoly Man and gave him a makeover, you would have Elon Musk. He's this really strange synthesis of, of, um, of these odd um, things. The scale of his ambition is weirdly kind of Soviet, but privatized into one person. All of these great works, but one guy is gonna do it. It's kind of a Soviet neoliberalism. Um, we see that also in space. He's already coming up with a private alternative to NASA um, which is also implicitly alternative to the one really successful space program still existing, Russia's, um, which inherited the USSR space program. So there's, there's a, a lot of space race envy going on here too. Um, that this guy is the one who's now exploring space when the Soviet Union slash Russia used to be able to do with it. Um, then there's the whole basic question of, of um, science and technology. Uh, so sure, Musk is not just a rich guy, he's an inventor, so what? Well, it's kind of a sore point. Russia has, has had lots of inventors that have come up with a lot of great inventions over the years, and also a lot of um, spurious claims to have invented things that they didn't, like uh, the phone, the telephone, the radio, and so on and so forth, the Wizard of Oz. Um, where, uh, the Russians are familiar with, with a lot of these claims. Um, but what it comes down to is everybody knows that Russia's um, educational system, Russia's capacity in science and technology is huge. Russia should be a powerhouse when it comes to invention. Um, and maybe when it comes to invention, possibly, but when it comes to developing, marketing, and producing um, the works of genius, um, that is where Russia has traditionally fallen quite short. And there's a reason that the Russian history of technology is filled with accusations of theft by foreigners. And this is on my mind because of conversations I've had with Francis Bernstein, a historian of medicine with whom I happen to be sheltering in place for several weeks now. Um, she's been working on uh, on Russian prosthetics. And there are all these stories, even going back to pre-Soviet times, of Russian inventors developing a great prosthetic device and then saying it was stolen and marketed in the West, um, stolen from them, and they're not getting any credit. And I'm not getting into whether or not these things really were stolen, but the contrast is really clear um, between the possibility that there are these great inventors in Russia who come up with these ideas, um, but in, a, um, in an environment that really does not have the infrastructure to allow them to actually bring these, um, these inventions to the public. And in fact, it's nothing but obstacles to um, bring these inventors to the, the inventions to the public or to the market. Um, so arguably Russia's education system and so on are really con conducive to the creation of genius and creation by geniuses, but a terrible place to bring all this to fruition. Um, and this is where the contrast between a, an American national myth and a Russian national myth, if I can be overly general, really um, comes into play. The American national myth when it comes to invention and technology, when it comes to everything with computers and the internet and so on and so forth, is two guys in a garage come up with something, right? The whole um, Wozniak, Bill Jobs story um, that 
it's it's basically like you know my uh, my dad has a bar and let's put on a musical right that the, the, this kind of gumption and invention by individuals a couple of them maybe working together creates great things um but in in russia uh statements by putin and people around him for instance um often go back to the idea they don't really believe that these devices um, and these technologies in the West were created by two guys in a garage. Very often, especially when it involves computers and the internet, that's just a myth, the CIA is behind it. So the CIA created the internet. There's no way a few people just created the iPhone. Um, it's gotta be part of some sort of state initiative. And both of these things show these powerful national, national narratives. Um, in the US, the individual being everything and the state being discounted again and again. There was that whole controversy several years ago when Obama was trying to make the point um, I think for once inarticulately when he said, you know, you built, you didn't build that um, talking to people who came up with a great idea that you had the, in, you didn't build the roads and the infrastructure that allow you to um, do great things in America, trying to basically do an anti Ayn Randy and anti neoliberal approach to um, American invention, but you, we need the structures of state and structures of government to facilitate people developing ideas. Um, where, um, Whereas um, often in Russia, the individual initiative gets downplayed and it's the state that's the hero. It's the state that creates um, and the individual is distrusted. Um, the state more often than not gets in the way of creating these things. So um, an example I, I, I highly recommend is in 2019, I'm sure some of you saw this, Andrei Leshyak, um, working with Nastaya Shevremia, put together a seven part YouTube documentary history of the Russian internet. Um, it's on, still on YouTube. In English, it's called internet, which is not an English word, not really a word at all. In Russian, it's called khalivar, which is, is strangely enough a Russian word, but it's two words in English that actually do make up a Russian word, holy war, the why it makes up a Russian word I've never quite understood. And if you watch um, these documentaries, which I highly recommend you do, there are all of these interviews with all of these big players in the Russian internet. Um, and you watch, and after watching for a while, you start to realize that most of these interviews are not taking place in Russia. Some are taking place in Israel, but a lot of them are taking place in Silicon Valley. Um, tech in Russia um, is often about starting something up in Russia and then having brain drain to somewhere else, um, in part because the state's interfering. All of this then makes Silicon Valley to um, a certain mindset look really great as an alternative to, um, to the obstacles that these uh, tech guys are running into in Russia. Um, so Silicon, so, I, it's it's hard right now, I think, in the United States, if you're not um, if you're if you're on the sort of liberal left to look at Silicon Valley and think of them as, as a great, wonderful, positive utopian place. Um, but in context, there, there is a definite appeal. And when you see that these guys who come from Russia move Silicon Valley, get rich and get to do whatever they want, um, that's pretty good. And you have Elon Musk out there, of course. Um, so then, what's going on with all of these uh, life hack Russian inventions um, that are there, of course, for comedy? Um, but it all plays in with this uh, combined inferiority superiority complex. On the one hand, uh, there's there is this kind of um, self-deprecating declaration of Russian inventiveness. Look what we can do here, um, even if it's ridiculous. Um, and it's ridiculous in part because look at the scope that's available for them to work with: um, crappy apartments, crappy cars, uh, very very few resources available, and anything that's accomplished is really some is really a great accomplishment. Um, this also fits in with what I alluded to before, this long ironic tradition of Russian pride and how uniquely bad things are in Russia and how um, uniquely suited Russians are to survive the uniquely bad things, um, which in a way then, then helps foster a sense of, of a kind of greatness. So one of the things that these memes do, I think, is ask, could you have done all of this if you were in Russia, Elon Musk? We're in Russia, look what we can accomplish. Um, Bell and Olsen uh, Shipyatsky talk about the admiration for the genius that, that they found um, in uh, a lot of youth, youth culture uh, in Ulyanovsk where they were living and the whole phenomenon of this uh, kind of cult of Ayn Rand. And all of that is absolutely true. Um, but I think there's another possible um, resentment and envy in the Elon Musk memes that has to do with the, with the possibilities open to him by not living in Russian, by not, um, by not uh, being Russian. Um, there's this also brings in the whole question of admiration for rich people. It's changed a little bit, but I think Russian rich people are kind of tainted by definition. How can you admire Russian rich people? Where did their money come from? They can't have inherited from, from robber barons three generations ago and have it basically laundered by 
by decades of pretending that the robber baroning never happened. Um, it's, it's all still too close to the original crimes of whatever kind of theft from the state started their, their uh, fortunes. Um, this reminds me of something that I encountered a lot in the 1990s when working on Russian popular culture. I was looking at Russian romance novels and there weren't very many that were natively Russian. Almost all of them were translated and it occurred to me that it made sense because one of the things you need in a romance novel is a handsome prince, often a rich man, a good suitor, right? Where are you going to find that in 1990s Russia? Where are you going to find the honest, um, admirable rich guy? Um, this is the sort of stuff that started to change. You can read about it in Elizabeth Schimpfels' wonderful book, Rich Russians. Um, but I think attempts to come up with a, a, an admirable rich Russian are still largely in the realm of fantasy. I talk about this in, um, in uh, Russia's Alienations, where uh, in one of the ethnogenesis novels, there's this uh, hero of a trilogy called Billionaire, Andrei Gumilyov, descendant of the poet, um, who is an inventor, he's perfect, he's wonderful, his money is not ill-gotten, he doesn't take bribes and all of that, and he's a complete fantasy, um, precisely because he seems completely divorced from the context that, um, out of which these rich people arose. He's an imaginary figure. And the Russian internet, I think, likes their neoliberal her heroes the same way they like their cheese, imported. Um, just as the 1990s Russian imagination gave us the foreign man as the ideal suitor, these memes remind us that the ideal investor slash plutocrat is also probably foreign, which also is remind, while also reminding us of how much Russians could do if only they lived in conditions that allowed them to prosper. So that's where I'll stop, um, and I'm happy to take questions and comments. Great, thank you, Elliot. I am going to enable chat. And if people have any questions, you can go ahead. Oh, um, yes, Alexei, you have a question? Yeah. Yes, you can go ahead. I'll unmute you. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, thanks for the talk. <clears throat> it's my, my first experience of, of joining you. So thanks for hosting such a, uh, such a great thing. I feel like I'm in Kamchatka here in Houston in terms of Russian studies and getting access to some sort of vibrant academic life is <laughs> very nice. Uh, Elliot, um, I... I enjoyed your analysis, but I have some, I think, comments slash questions uh, in regards to uh, why it was Musk and not pretty much any other person who was picked as these kind of sort of internet memes. Because if you think about the, I mean, the number of uh, foreign investors, like Elon Musk is, well, pr pretty large. Think about the weird British guy, Branson, right? Think about the uh, Amazon guy. Uh, there are many charismatic billionaires in in America and, and worldwide. And for some reason, it was just Musk, right? That became a source of these sort of internet memes. That's one thing. And the second thing uh, you did not mention, but there was a specific point in time when these memes appeared, right, and uh, blossomed. Uh, when at some point, I think it, I think it was connected with Dmitry Rogozin, the head of Roscosmos, right, uh, making fun of uh, the U.S. space program and saying that they should use a trampoline to deliver their uh, astronauts into space. And then, I mean, there was this reliance on a private company that many people did not believe in. Uh, and in this sense, I think initially, and I mean, that's my opinion, and I, I just wondered to what kind of, to what degree you would agree or to a degree or disagree with it. The initial impetus, so at some point, I mean, Russian internet meme is part of the global meme culture, right? And in this sense, they borrow extensively from it. So I would not kind of uh, overemphasize the Russianness of this phenomenon. It's a transnational phenomenon where people uh, know English, where people have global access to global web. 
and they borrow some of the things that kind of seem funny to them. But I think it all started with, with rockets, right? <clears throat> with, uh, with the space program. And in this sense, uh, I wonder if we can uh, argue that the reason why it was Musk that became such a kind of cult figure in, in, Russian, in the Russian <clears throat> part of internet and the runet is that precisely it became associated with rockets that occupied a special kind of place in Russian historical imagination, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, rockets, uh, <clears throat> uh, I mean, I just finished reading an excellent article by Mikhail Rozhansky from Irko School, uh, who discusses diaries, but one of the arguments that he is building there is that the Soviet people uh, were taught, were educated in kind of living in history, right? In mm -hmm. feeling very kind of clo close connection with history. They were thinking, uh, they were seeking to, con were taught to seek to contribute to history. And rockets at some point encapsulated this technique hope and imagination, right? Uh, especially uh, since the Soviet space program was so advanced for such a long time, a real competitor to the US space program. <clears throat> and I think what people, why people are frustrated and why Musk is such a kind of point of concern is because Russian space program is not going anywhere. And so these visions of future, this kind of feeling of historicity, of grand history, right, of uh, one's ability to uh, contribute to the historical development as part of the Russian national body, they are inherited in Russian culture and yet people feel betrayed about that. People feel betrayed by kind of what Rogozin does, right? By the numerous failure of Roscosmos, by the proton rockets exploding at the start. Uh, so in this sense, I think, yeah, I think rockets and the space program plays this particular place in this kind of uh, internet culture. And then yes, and then once it has this initial impulse, it acquires its own. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was not too, uh, too well kind of uh, argued, but I, I mean, I hope you got the idea and I think I should stop <laughs> talking. No, and, and, and Alexei, thank you for joining us. That was, I'm glad to have you here. And actually, no, it was very well argued. I agree with everything you said. In fact, but I, I feel like you've expanded upon the point that I was making, in fact, about um, uh, space exploration, Russian science fiction, the importance of, of rocketry. Um, in both countries, uh, the space program has fallen on a harder times than it used to be, but it, it means much more for Russia than I think it means to the U.S. I mean, one of the reasons it fell on hard times in the U.S. is people got bored with it. Um, there was the romanticism and excitement about space has been gone for decades. Um, it just has never with the exception of the moon landing, which is of course a big one, um, for a long time, I should say, it has not occupied such a, an important part of the national consciousness in the U.S. and but been such an important part of the myth. And it's huge, of course, for Russia. Um, I completely agree with you about the connection, the back and forth between uh, Russian memes and memes around the world. It's, it's, something, it's something I'm wrestling with in the book that I'm writing, and it comes up in almost every uh, one of these lectures. Um, but um, you yourself, I think, made the case for why you know, Musk and not say Bezos or anyone like that. Musk is, um, in addition to being much more interesting and charismatic, I think, than most of these, these other billionaires, Musk is really um, putting his foot on territory um, that Russia, that, that Russia in some ways can claim. Um, and that is space, right? It's the rockets and space exploration. So that um, activates a whole um, set of potential uh, responses and a whole range of interests. So I, I, you're completely right. Thank you. All right, uh, we have a question from Amaryllis. Uh, this is interesting because we understate the amount of privilege the fathers of tech like Bill Gates had. Do you see any sub subtext of how the Russian system's educational system slash technical training gives more access leading to technological upward mobility? I, I like the way you frame, that qu you frame that question because of how good it is and how inappropriate it is and in a, in a positive way for the Russian concept, the up, and particularly the upward mobility um, part of it, that there's a, a, a foundation that the Russian educational system has traditionally given um, students, in particular as brighter students, um, that is so much stronger than, say, we have in the United States, um, and that um, opens up so much potential to do great things. 
Um, but it's precisely in something, in something close to what we might call upward mobility, where then we see the obstacles. This is, I mean, this, in a sense, this is a variation on the whole superfluous man thing, right? Like you, you have all this talent, where are you going to express it? How are you going to express it? And um, I'm not trying to be this great booster for the American capitalist system. I mean, God, that's the last thing I want to do. However, however, um, there are, and, and I don't want to overestimate how, you know, how anyone could become a great plutocrat in the United States. Obviously not. But um, still, the system that we have um, does make it more possible for someone with talent and a great idea and huge connections, absolutely, and, you know, rich daddy and all of that, um, to build something and to um, have a huge place in the market, in public consciousness, uh, in the uh, history, of, in the development of technology. Um, in, in Russia, I think those um, possibilities are much more limited structurally. Um, and so I think that that's a big part of this. That's why there's so many, uh, so many great Russian scientists elsewhere. Okay, and um, Allison, you had a question, so I can unmute you now. Can you hear me? Yeah, hey, Allison. Hey, so, you know, of course, as soon as you mentioned the superfluous man, I, I want to ask a, a kind of follow-up question about maybe Elon's masculinity or the, the perception of it in these memes. You know, I get the sense generally that these big tech giants, whether it's Jeff Bezos or Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk, their masculinity in the US at least is sort of constantly weirdly in doubt, despite how much money they have. And of course, money means power. But are you getting any sense of that perception carrying over in, in Russia? Or is he more kind of stable as some sort of macho, powerful guy, you know, over there? I just, I have no sense of what their perception of him in that regard is. Well, I would say that in the, in the United States, Elon Musk has more masculine credibility than your average tech billionaire. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's in good shape. Um, there are lots of pictures of posing with swords and all of that. Um, just, being, just being on the Joe Rogan podcast, uh, uh, podcast already um, and, pal and you know, being buddy-buddy with Joe Rogan and, and these other guys puts him in a different category from you know, Mark Zuckerberg. I, I, just imagining Mark Zuckerberg on the Joe, Joe Rogan podcast would be enough to actually make me watch the Joe Rogan podcast because it's, it's um, imaginable only as a kind of wonderful exercise of parody or revenge. Um, so I think unlike some of these other guys, Elon Musk actually can um, pull it off um, in this realm, in this realm of kind of a uh, tech macho that um, I wouldn't really uh, expect from say Jeff Be Bezos or Bill Gates or, um, or, any of the, or any of these guys. So I think that that helps with his appeal, with his appeal um, in the English speaking meme world. And I, th I think it doesn't hurt with his appeal in the Russian speaking meme world either. He's, he's also trying, he's better looking than most of them too, I would say. And I, got, I realize this is subjective, um, but I think he is. This is not me having a crush on Elon Musk. I can't stand the guy, but. Okay, um, and we have a question from Olga. Uh, Olga, I can unmute you now. Um, uh, hi, I personally uh, think maybe this interest of uh, um, uh, in Russian memes to um, to uh, to Elon Musk, maybe it's connected somehow to this event in 2018, uh, when um, Elon Musk insulted uh, this um, cave d d uh, diver who participated in the rescue of in Thailand of this uh, team football team of boys. Right. And uh, uh, Russian very often um, to to um, refer to these events and their memes. And uh, the thing is, uh, uh, Elon Musk suggested his useless submarine who could actually stuck in this cave, yeah. and uh, divers re definitely rejected it. 
And all these useless, useless inventions maybe somehow even refers to this use, useless submarine because Elon Musk is very arrogant and annoying guy and it's, it's uh, not everyone consider him a real genius and in Russia people usually sarcastically see this kind of people. Would, would you think it's, it's really um, uh, just coincidence or probably it's kind of a connection between these 2018 events and in this interest in 2018? Mm -hmm. well, that's a great question. I actually forgotten about the whole Thailand um, connection. And um, I think the fact that I was able to look for as many Elon Musk Russian memes as I could find and still not remember the Thailand connection suggests that while the whole Thailand thing may have raised Elon Musk's profile in the sense of awareness of him and, and chatter about him, I haven't seen memes that actually reflect that specifically. And now that you mentioned, it seems like a real lost opportunity. Um, so that if, it seems to me that if that were on the mind of the meme makers, they would have um, found a way to express that. But um, I, haven't seen, I haven't seen anything that, that links back to it. So I think the connection is there just in, in probably there just in the sense of general um, awareness and publicity, but I haven't seen anything beyond that. Um, but, I, but now that you mentioned it, I, 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 you know, I think it fits in the sort of larger Elon Musk story, but I haven't seen it in the memes. Thank you. It also reminds me why I don't like him. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> that story. Okay, uh, and we have um, another question from Lexi. If you, uh, and I will unmute you now. Yeah, that, that's actually a quick question. Uh, did you, Elliot, consider comparing these memes with Musk uh, and a bunch of memes with Gagarin that mm. you know, quite recently? Hmm. No, I didn't, but now, thank you, and now I want to. Um, that is a great idea. Um, just the idea of comparison of, of comparing them is fascinating, given that Gagarin actually, you know, physically went into space, um, and Musk himself has not. Um, but no, I, I, I'll take a look at that. Do you have any thoughts on the Gagarin memes? Okay. All right. Um, more questions in the chat or use your hands or send us a message and I can unmute you. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for coming. Next week, I believe, will be um, Freaks of the Russian Internet. Um, so make of that what you will. Um, and uh, it'll be a lot of uh, video material. So I hope to see some of you back then. And um, it's great seeing all these faces here. Have a good weekend.